The muscles of the back are often forgotten during your anatomy studies, but are just as important as all those potentially more interesting muscles on the front of your body. They're involved in the movements of the spinal column, ribcage and shoulder joint, and work in antagonistic pairs with your anterior muscles to ensure you don't just fold in the middle. We've already covered the deep back muscles, so today we're going to look at the intermediate and superficial muscles of the back. There are less of these, and they're less complicated than the deep back muscles, so it should be an easier ride. I'm Dr. Connor Boylan, and welcome to More Than Skin Deep. In part one of our series on the back muscles, we covered the anatomy of the vertebral column, key features of the individual vertebrae and the occiput, and the anatomy of the three deep back muscle layers, transversa spinalis, erector spinae, and spino transversalis. If these are topics you're not especially familiar with, I'd suggest checking out our part one video on the back muscles before you engage with this one. We won't be recapping any of this content today. Okay, let's jump into it. The next layer out from the deep back muscles is known as the intermediate muscle layer. This consists of only two muscles and both of their functions are to act on the rib cage to either elevate or depress it. For this reason, this layer is also sometimes known as the respiratory muscle layer. The first of these muscles is the serratus posterior superior. This muscle gets its name from the Latin origin serro, which means cut or sore. Think like serrated. When you look at the muscle, you'll understand where it gets its name, as it consists of a flat origin from the nuchal ligament and the spinous processes of C7 to T3, before splitting into four serrations, which insert into the second to fifth ribs. The function of serratus posterior superior is to elevate the ribs and thus aid in respiration. Acting like an evil twin to this muscle is the lower serratus posterior inferior. This muscle looks much the same, but has the opposite effect. It originates from the spinous processes of T11 to L2 and inserts into the 9th to 12th ribs. Its function is to depress the lower part of the rib cage, also assisting in respiration. And that's it for the intermediate back muscles. Easy peasy. Now let's look at the superficial back muscles. Here there are five muscles, and you'll probably have heard of most of them in one way or another. They all originate from the vertebral column or skull in some way, and insert into the bones of the shoulder joint, the clavicle, scapula, and humerus. For this reason, they all act in some way to move the shoulder joint, and are occasionally called the appendicular muscles. Let's start with the big chonker that everyone knows about, latissimus dorsi. This big, triangular-shaped muscle is named very literally. The word latissimus comes from the Latin word latus, for wide, and dorsi simply relates to its dorsal or posterior position. Thus its name literally means widest muscle of the back. This huge muscle originates entirely from the thoracolumbar fascia, which is a large connective tissue sheath surrounding the deep muscles of the back and trunk. If you want to be a bit more specific, latissimus dorsi approximately originates from the spinous processes of T7 to L5, the iliac crests, and the posterior parts of the 9th to 12th ribs. Latissimus dorsi condenses superiorly into a single tendon that spirals before inserting into the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. This spiraling means that the fibres originating from the most inferior part of the muscle insert into the most superior part of the humerus, and vice versa. The function of latissimus dorsi is to extend, adduct, and internally rotate the humerus at the shoulder joint. Think of a person doing a pull-up. This is exactly the movement that the latissimus dorsi muscle facilitates. The second large muscle of the superficial back that you're also likely to have heard of is the trapezius muscle. The two trapezius muscles are triangular in shape with their longest attachment running down the midline of the back. When considered together, the muscles form a recognizable trapezium shape, hence their name. The trapezius muscle originates from the superior nuchal line and external occipital protuberance of the skull, the nuchal ligament, and the spinous processes of C7 all the way down to T12. It travels laterally to attach to the acromion of the scapula and rolls over anteriorly to attach to the lateral third of the clavicle. The function of trapezius is complex and reflects its unique shape. The fibres can contract in groups to have different actions. When the superior fibres contract, they elevate and upwardly rotate the scapula. 
when the middle fibers contract, they draw the scapula backwards, and when the inferior fibers contract, they depress and also upwardly rotate the scapula. The upper fibers also have a small effect on the movements of the neck. While the other intermediate and superficial back muscles are innervated by nerves originating from the anterior rami of the spinal nerves, trapezius is innervated predominantly by the accessory cranial nerve. The last three superficial back muscles are a little less well known and all act on the scapula in some way. The first of these is the four-sided rhomboid major. Like the trapezius, this muscle is named simply for its appearance when dissected. Rhomboid major originates from the spinous processes of T2 to T5 and inserts into the medial part of the scapula. Accompanying this muscle is its smaller cousin, rhomboid minor. This muscle similarly originates from the nuchal ligament and the spinous processes of C7 and T1 and inserts into the medial scapula above rhomboid major. Both of these muscles act together to retract and downwardly rotate the scapula. The fifth and final superficial back muscle is the levator scapulae. This spindly muscle originates from the transverse processes of C1 to C4 and inserts into the superior angle and medial border of the scapula. Levator scapulae acts to elevate and downwardly rotate the scapula while also acting a little to move the neck. And there we go. That's all the superficial muscles of the back. Let's look at them all in unison here to appreciate how they relate to one another. Now you've finished this video, you should have at least some familiarity with the deep, intermediate and superficial muscles of the back. I haven't covered much on innovation of these muscles, as the paths of the nerves can get a little complex and would really warrant their own video in the future. For now, I suggest you get yourself a big cup of tea and sit down and revise all these muscles again for good measure. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something and have a great day.